It's your boy Hi Five Vega back again, and today I'm here to review and test the best selling head unit on Amazon. I've got it right here. You guys are not going to believe what it is. This is 100% not clickbait. As of March 2022, this is the best selling head unit on Amazon. And here it goes right here. It is the Boss 616 UAB. So what do you say we go ahead and unbox this, see what all is inside. It's a small box. We'll test it and uh, we'll see what I think about it. Yeah, I just wanna be the greatest. And check that out, 200 watts. That's a lot of power for a small box. We'll definitely test that, but let's check out and see what kind of features they have to show us. So as far as features go, it's pretty simple. You know, they tell you inputs and outputs, USB, auxiliary compatible with the output of iPod, iPhone, smartphones, and MP3 players. It has Bluetooth. Yeah, that's basically it. So you have a 3.5, a USB, and a Bluetooth input to get signal in here. Oh, they also got a little emblem here, engineered in the USA. Hmm, that's interesting. I've never seen that on a Boss Audio product before, but I haven't looked at a lot of Boss Audio products, I guess, brand new ones. So let's open it up. We have our accessory pack here. This basically has our power plug and the speaker. So it's got two separate. It's got one for power, one for speaker outputs. That's kind of crazy. You don't see that often. It's got a the push pins to release it from the holder and then a small little Bluetooth remote. This is much like a dual or the blah punk of the same price range. So this thing's very light. We have a basic schematic on the top sticker, kind of shows you what does what. Like I said, weird that it has two plugs, but it does have two plugs, kind of like a factory radio. It has a uh, antenna, a front and rear output, and a 10 amp fuse. As far as the front goes, we have our USB here. We have the auxiliary. We have a play and pause, which is nice, on, especially on a cheaper unit. They don't always have that. And then, you know, programs one through six. Well, we do have a volume knob, so there's a plus on that. So yeah, I think this unit sells right now for around 36 to $37, something like that. I will put a price somewhere on the screen so you can see how much it costs at the time of this review. Let's see what, uh, what kind of power it puts out, what kind of voltage it puts out and all of that good I stuff. I wanted to show you in the manual the power ratings and it does say here, 50 watts by four. We know that's definitely not gonna happen. Um, it shows the impedance as for an eight ohm. It doesn't say what impedance the power rating is at, but you could run this thing at half an ohm and I doubt you would get 50 watts by four. But you know, that is what we are here to test. I do not see any output voltage numbers for the uh, for the RCA, so we'll definitely have to check that. All right, we're gonna see what kind of power we get. It is rated on the owner's manual as 200 watts or 50 watts by four. All channels are hooked up and driven at four ohms. That's where we're gonna do the test. And I'm using a one kilohertz sine wave. So let's see what kind of power we get. I expect, you know, 10 watts or so, but we won't know until we actually do it. So let me unpause this and uh, we'll get straight to it. All right, we get 14 watts at 14.4 volts, all the way up without clipping. Yeah, not too bad. All right, now let's put it to the test and let's see what volume do we get before we start clipping the built-in amp. I've already got it set up on the one kilohertz track. All we gotta do is unpause it and turn the volume up. So let's get that going. We have signal, one kilohertz detect. The top volume is 40. So at volume 36, we have distortion. So, you know, the old thing rings true on this one, you know, about three quarters of the way up, you're pretty good because at 
Volume 36, you're distorted. Volume 35, you're still clean. Now let's see if that rings true on the 40 hertz track. 33, 34. Yep, 36, you're distorting on the 40 hertz track as well. And, you know, you can't see this screen because we're going to talk about this, but that screen is actually really, really bad. Now we're going to check the RCA output voltage. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to have the negative lead on the outside of the RCA here and the positive lead on the middle. That way we can see what the AC voltage output is. Have it on the one kilohertz track. It's the same. I tested it both ways, one kilohertz and 40 hertz. It doesn't matter. We're using the one kilohertz track. I'm going to turn it up and we'll see at what volume it puts out what amount of volts. Let's turn it on. Let's see where we're at. We are at six volume. You'll see as we start to creep up that we will start to get some sort of voltage here. At volume 23, we get 0.1. Volume 27, we're at 0.3. And as you'll see with a lot of these units, you get a lot of ramping as you get closer to the highest volume here. At 33, we're at 0.9. 34, we finally get our full one volt. At 35, which is our loudest clean volume that we can be at, we're at 1.2 volts, which is kind of common for a cheap unit like this. And then as we go up, you'll see it go kind of exponentially. So at clipping, we're at 1.4 volts. Past clipping, 37, we're at 1.5 volts. 38, 1.6, 39, we're at 1.7. And at full volume, 40, we're at 1.8 volts. So it's basically what they would call a two volt head unit. Most of them do this ramping and you get all your voltage towards the very end of the volume. Let's talk about the unit itself. This is in the off position. You can see the light's pretty dim here. Let's turn it on, see if we can maybe adjust the brightness on that and get it looking a little bit better. And then we'll kind of go through the features as well. I'll go ahead and pull out the USB drive. Illumination. All right, so that's low, medium, and high. Definitely, I think high is the only acceptable one on this range. Low is almost invisible. Medium is not nearly enough. High is just about right, although the blue on the outside is probably a little too much. Then we have a bass adjustment, a treble adjustment, and a balance. So bass and treble, no mid-range. You can balance left and right. We have a fade front and rear, a loudness on and off, an EQ. So let's see what presettings we have here. Off, flat, you know, that'd basically be the same thing to me. I don't know why it's two different options. Classic, pop, rock, jazz, EQ off. I don't see no way to change this display. You get the spectrum analyzer, that's it. You get the one option. All right, this would be Bluetooth pairing. Let me look in my phone here and see what it comes up as. So it comes up as Boss Audio. All right, it's already linked. That was no problem whatsoever. Done it pretty quick. Let's see if we can't play a track on it and see if it'll pop up. All right, we are playing. We do have the information here. It tells the album, tells the artist. So here goes the title. All yours, the artist, Tyler Childers. A 
and then the album. My final thoughts on this unit. At $35, I just checked, that's the current price as of March uh, 2022. Do I think this is a buy? No, absolutely not. You can get a unit very similar to this from Walmart for around $18, $17, something like that. It's a dual branded unit. It's basically the same exact unit. I actually put one of those in the Suburban when I sold it, just to have a radio in there so I could take out the 80 PRS that was in there. Now, it does have a few nice features. It's not a lot of money, 35 bucks. It's nice that it does have this title and display the information of the artist. The Spectrum Analyzer is kind of cool. That's your only choice. The Illumination, your choice is blue. You don't get any other colors. At $35, I don't think you could probably ask for more. The screen is questionable. It's not great. It's probably going to go out like a lot of these cheaper units do. It did a decent amount of power at 15 watts. I don't think that's super bad, especially for a unit that's only $15. It put out at full volume about 1.8 volts. A lot of units that cost, you know, $150 do the same exact thing. So I can't be mad about that. It does have the voltage ramping like every single head unit I've tested. That's just something that they do. So if you like this kind of content, let me know in the comments below what head units you'd like to see me test. I'm trying to test stuff that's available that people can buy today, not a old head unit that's discontinued. So keep that in mind when you leave that comment. And outside of that, I appreciate each and every one of you who take the time to like, comment, subscribe. If you like this kind of video, let me know in the comments below. I will do many more. And uh, with all that being said, I hope to catch every single one of you on the next video. Huge shout out to all my Patreon supporters, but a special shout out goes to the six star or more members, 2001 Monolithic, Gene Nava, Joaquin Juarez, El Fuego Audio, Travis McClendon, Brandon Hanna, William Berg, Box Boy Audio Sound Solutions, Jesus Tires, Dennis Cromwell Jr., Scott Dilbeck, D. Stewart's, Aaron Waltz, David Koslick, Scott McCord, Matthew Tolberg, Debo Bass, Corey D, Trucker9000, Bobby Burkett, Kevin Lautner, The Cardio Guy, and James Childers. For as little as $2 a month, you can join the team and get access to the exclusive Patreon-only podcast that goes on every single month. If any of this sounds interesting to you, check me out at patreon.com slash vega.